In this video, we're going to look at uh, the specific case of collecting gases over water. And this is an extension of Dalton's law of partial pressure. So it turns out that when a gas is collected over water, it will be a mixture of the gas and water vapor. So let's take a look at what the, an example of this. Let's take a look at um, what this would look like. So in this slide, we have the example of where we react zinc solid with hydrochloric acid and we make hydrogen gas. And all of these reactions are taking place with water around because the zinc solid and the HCl are in aqueous solution. So what kind of happens in this setup? Well, we have the HCl and it, we allow it to go down into a flask where we have the zinc. So these two are going to react and we're going to start to get bubbles of hydrogen. So the hydrogen gas is going to start to fill up this flask and because it's connected with a tube, it's going to come across this tube and start to fill up this collection tube that we have on the right side. And you'll notice that there's water over here at, at 19 degrees Celsius. So the reason why we collect it over water is just so that we can collect the gas only and not collect anything else, not collect any air or anything else. So what you would start with is you would start with this tube that's all filled up with water and then as the gas comes in and fills the tube up, it displaces the water and pushes the water down. Uh, and then we get a new water level and we can figure out the amount of gas produced by the displacement. So that's, that's sort of how this, this reaction uh, would work. Now the question is, is what's going on with this gas that's above the, the water? Well it turns out that this gas is a mixture of the H2 gas plus H2O gas. So the question is, is where does the H2O gas come from? So if we were to have our setup here where we have our tube that has our gas collected in it and this is over water. Well, we have our H2 gas in here and a little bit of the water evaporates. So we have H2O uh, liquid and a little bit of this goes to H2O gas. And this is actually an equilibrium. So we get a little bit of evaporation that takes place and this forms an equilibrium mixture of water and a gas. So in essence, this H2 gas is not just H2 gas, it's actually H2 gas plus a little bit of H2O gas that comes from the evaporation of water. And we call this the vapor pressure. So the vapor pressure is the pressure of water over liquid water, and this should be water vapor, over liquid water at a given temperature. So for example, at 19 degrees Celsius, there, you can go to a table and look up the vapor pressure of H2O gas inside the mixture and you can get that. So this is not something you have to memorize or something that you have to come up with, this is something that you look up, the vapor pressure. And so what we can say is, because this is a mixture, we can say that the total pressure is equal to the pressure of the hydrogen gas plus the pressure of the H2O, because it's a mixture of two gases. So in general, what we do is we would look this up. We would measure the total pressure. And then what we would do is we could say, well, if we want to just get the pressure of the H2, this would be the total pressure minus the pressure of the H2O. And we could basically compensate that total pressure by um, subtracting away the, the gas that we're not interested in. We're not, we don't care about the H2O, we care about the H2. And then we can get our pressure of just the H2. So this is one of our lecture problems. And this one involves the decomposition of potassium chloride. So it gives a reaction. So it says calculate how many moles of O2 would be obtained from 1.300 grams of KClO3. So in essence, this question is kind of breaking up a stoichiometry question with gases. And the, f the first part of the question is asking us to go from the mass of KClO3 to the moles of O2. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to first convert this to moles of KClO3. We're going to use the molecular weight for that. And then once we have the moles of KClO3, we can go to the moles of O2 using the mole ratio of A to B. Um, of the KClO3 to the O2. So this is just setting us up because in the second part we're going to use those moles of O2 to do some gas law calculations and to look at the, collecting a gas over water. Okay, so if we take our 1.300 grams of KClO3 and we have our molecular weight, that's 122.54 grams per mole of KClO3.
And then we want to figure out, we want to go from moles of KClO3 to moles of O2. We look at the balanced reaction and we see that for every two moles of KClO3, there are three moles of O2. Oh, and we actually don't even have to put another line here because it's just asking us for the moles. So we can calculate this, and if you, if you do the math, what you get for this is 0 0.01591 moles of O2. Okay, so that takes care of the first part. Now let's look at the second part. So it says, if the quantity of O2 were collected over water, what volume would the O2 occupy if the temperature is 23 degrees Celsius and the atmospheric pressure is 745 millimeters of mercury? The vapor pressure of water is 23.8 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so if we want to get the volume, so this is the question is, is what volume? We're going to just set up PV equals NRT and we're going to get our volume in terms of the other variables. So step one is to get volume by itself. So that's going to be NRT over P. So what I need in order to calculate this is the number of moles of O2, the temperature, and the pressure of O2. Now the number of moles we have from the first part, that's 0 0.01591 moles. The temperature is 23 degrees Celsius, and if I convert that to Kelvin, I get 296.15 Kelvin, and I do that by just adding 273.15. Now the pressure of O2 is the more complicated thing. So what this thing says is it says that the atmospheric pressure, which is the total pressure, and at the end of this video, I'm going to explain why the atmospheric pressure is the total pressure. But for right now, let's just take that at face value. So it says the total pressure is 745 millimeters of mercury, and it says that the vapor pressure of water is 23.8 millimeters of mercury. So if I want to get the pressure of O2 specifically, I have to remember my Dalton's law of partial pressure. The total pressure is going to equal the pressure of oxygen plus the pressure of the water vapor or the vapor pressure. So what I could say is, well, the PO2 is going to equal P total minus the P of the H2O. So in this case, it says the pressure total is 745 millimeters of mercury. And my vapor pressure is 23.8 millimeters of mercury. So this is going to give me a vapor pressure of, uh, I'm sorry, this is going to give me a corrected pressure for the oxygen of 723.9 millimeters of mercury. And if I convert this to atmospheres, I get 0 0.9525 atm. So we're going to plug our number of moles in, that's 0 0.01591 moles. We're going to plug in our 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. We're going to plug in our temperature, which is 296.15 Kelvin. And we're going to divide that by our pressure, which is 0 0.9525 atm. And so this is going to equal at the very end 0 0.406 liters of the oxygen gas. Now, I promised that I was going to explain why the atmospheric pressure is the same as the total pressure. So why is the atmospheric pressure equal to the total pressure? It has to do with equilibrium. So you have your gas in a tube, and this is sitting over some water. So you got water in your tube up to this point, and um, you got your oxygen gas in the tube above the water. And what's basically happening here is you have your atmosphere that's pushing down on the water. And when it pushes down, it wants to push that water up into the tube. So, you know, you have to have something that pushes against it, and that's the oxygen gas. So because we're at equilibrium, and the reason why I, I can say that is, uh, and the reason why I know it's at equilibrium is because the water levels are not moving. So once the reaction is over, the amount of oxygen gas that's sitting in that tube is just sitting there. It's not moving up or down, it's just it's, the reaction is complete, so everything is static. So then we know that since everything is static, we're at equilibrium. So what must be the case at equilibrium is that the pressure inside must equal the pressure outside. So this is the pressure inside the tube must equal the pressure outside the tube. And so the pressure inside is going to be the pressure of the O2 plus the pressure of the H2O gas. This is the H2O vapor, and this is the pressure of the O2 gas. And the pressure outside, what's pushing down on all of this is the pressure of the atmosphere. 
I hope that explains why P atmosphere is equal to P total. And that's something you should keep in your mind because we may not necessarily tell you that it is um, that the atmospheric pressure is the total pressure. We may just tell you what the atmospheric pressure is. And since the reaction is at equilibrium and the, the reaction is finished, you, you know that the, the, the atmospheric pressure is equal to the total pressure.